Thank you so much, Madam Moderator. Really appreciate the work that SOLID is doing to support the board um, during this time where we're meeting remotely. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Seiron Fu. And before beginning today's proceedings, I would like to requ request that the board take a moment of silence in memoriam of Jeffrey Thomas, Assistant Executive Officer to the Board of Psychology. Um, if participants could please ensure your mute, your mute as we take a moment of silence in Jeffrey in Mr. Thomas's uh, memory, um, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for, for joining us in that moment of silence. Um, Mr. Thomas provided three decades of service to the board and he's greatly missed. Ms. Sorek, would you like to make any comments about Mr. Thomas? I would just echo your sentiments and uh, really appreciate starting the meeting um, in his honor. That was, uh, that was very uh, touching, thank you. Um, so, I would like to call um, to order the Board of Psychology's November board meeting. Um, Ms. McCochran, could you please call the roll to establish quorum? Sure. Uh, Kastuba? Here. Cervantes? Here. Boom. Hi. Harbsheet? Here. Nystrom. Here. Phillips. Present. Riscotte. Present. Rogers. Here. Tate. Here. Tate quorum is established. Thank you so much. Um, and pursuant to the provisions of Governor, Governor Gavin Newsom's Executive Order N2920, dated March 17, 2020, neither board member locations nor public meeting location are provided for today's meeting. Um, public participation may be through the WebEx link that you joined and that I see we have um, strong attendance today. Um, and if you have any trouble getting on the call to listen or to participate, please call 916 Five seven four seven seven two zero. Again, that number is nine one six five seven four seven seven two zero. All right. So now that we've established quorum and we've called the meeting to order, um, I would just like to make some brief remarks for item number two. Um, and so, the Board of Psychology protects consumers of psychological services by licensing psychologists regulating the practice of psychology and supporting the evolution of the profession. One of our goals in our strategic plan um, for the next five years was that with regard to continuing professional development, that we would implement audits for licensed board members when they renew. Um, four of our five licensed members were up for renewal and they all passed with flying colors. So congratulations to Dr. Phillips, Dr. Tate, Dr. Rogers, and Dr. Tasuga. And I think we're all probably clapping in, um, and cheering you on and <laughs> congratulating you and passing that. Um, but I wanted to lift that up um, in our president's welcome um, and reflect back our strategic plan. Um, the second is that um, I would like to welcome two new board members, Ms. Julie Nystrom, an appointee of Senate President Pro Tempore Tony Atkins, and Ms. Anna Frascate, an appointee of Governor Gavin Newsom. Ms. Nystrom is a principal consultant to the vice chair of the Senate Rules Committee. 
She brings to the board deep expertise in legislative affairs, drawing from her two-decade experience working in the California State Legislature. She resides in El Dorado County. Ms. Nestrom, would you like to make remarks? I just want to say thank you for those kind words, um, President Tehran, um, and um, that I look forward to um, serving um, on the board and, and working with um, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nystrom. Um, Ms. Ms. Riscate is a communication specialist at Stanford University, holding to the belief that all people have a right to them to live without fear. This has driven her work in various communication roles throughout her career. She resides in San Pablo in the Bay Area. Ms. Riscate, would you like to make any remarks? I just want to say thank you, everyone, um, for welcoming me, and I'm looking forward to serving on the board with you all. Thank you, Ms. Riscate. Um, in addition to all of our welcomes, um, I would also like to welcome Will Mc Willie McGuire, who will serve as the board's program counsel in 2021, and Clay Jackson, who will serve as regulatory counsel. This reflects a new co-counsel model instituted at DCA. So welcome, Will and Clay, um, to the Board of Psychology family. We're delighted to have you. Um, and this also means that we're saddened to announce that um, Ms. Noreen Marks um, is after retiring after two decades of service to the Department of Consumer Affairs, at least 15 of which have been with as, as the board's counsel. Um, Ms. Marks has been an exemplary partner to the board, and we're absolutely grateful to her service. Um, so thank you, Ms. Marks. It's been my pleasure and honor. Thank you very much. Um, and finally, you'll notice a robust agenda that includes at least 10 items in closed session today uh, and tomorrow. So to the extent possible, we will take action items in priority and informational items as we're able. As we arrive at each item, we'll let persons know if we're taking up the item or holding it for later. Um, and our um, BOP moderator will also provide guidance to us um, in terms of how we can go about engaging in public comment. And with that, um, Madam Moderator, before I ask for public comment for items not on the agenda, could you please um, walk through briefly how we can go, how the uh, members of the public can go about identifying that they have public comment? Sure. Uh, this is the moderator speaking. Um, to facilitate public comment today, we will be utilizing the WebEx question and answer feature. And when the board president reaches a point in the agenda at which public comment is appropriate, uh, public comment will be requested, and at the dir board's direction, I will turn on and announce the opening of the Q&A feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by clicking on that icon with a question mark in a square located at the bottom right-hand corner of their WebEx screen, and those instructions will be shared on the screen each time for your reference. In the Ask field, typically in the lower right-hand corner of the WebEx screen, Members of the public who wish to make a public comment will type, I would like to make a public comment and send to all panelists. Any other communication will not be responded to. Uh, members of the public, it's not necessary to identify yourself in order to make a public comment. And then we'll take comments in the order that they're received. I will call on the member of the public, unmute their microphone, and they'll be given time to make their comment. Um, and at the conclusion of their comment, uh, their microphone will be muted, and we will move on to the next member of the public who requests public comment. Please note that the Q&A feature is being used only as a means for members of the public to represent that they would like to make a verbal comment. Once you are unmuted, you may verbally state your comment. This is not a means to ask questions of the moderator or members of the board, and such inquiries submitted using this feature will not be answered. If any attendees are utilizing profane names, they will not be called upon to prevent members of the public from being subjected to profane language. While you are free to express criticism or negative views for the sake of the members of the public participating on the call, please do not use profane language when making public comments to the board. If you do not have a microphone, please click on audio and video at the top of your screen and select switch audio. If you need further assistance, please refer to the How to Join DCA WebEx event guide that was provided with the board meeting link. That's all I have for the instructions on public comment. Thanks so much, Madam Moderator. And I, I want to pardon um, my manners, actually. 
Um, I wanted to ask if the board had any comments um, with regard to the president's welcome before moving on. So apologies for that. Um, board members, if you have um, um, any comments, um, please feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hands and, um, and I'll call upon you. All right, seeing none, um, we'll go ahead and, and take public comment for item number three. Um, and as our board uh, moderator, excuse me, as our um, Madam Moderator indicated, she provided the um, tools for, for folks to do that. Um, before I invite the speakers to come forward, I would just ask that individuals making comments not discuss the specifics, including names, as to pending complaints, pending licensee applications, or pending disciplinary actions that may come before the board for a decision. Such discussions are considered ex parte communications, as they could provide information to the board members that is outside of the record in violation of the Administrative Procedure Act. Such discussions may create a conflict and interfere with the board's capacity to make necessary determinations. Board staff is available to speak to you individually and answer your questions outside of the hearing of board members. You may reach out to board staff at bopmail at dca.ca.gov. That's B as in boy, O-P as in Peter, mail, M-A-I-L, at dca.ca.gov. The board is eager to listen attentively to your comments. Um, and while there may be a desire to engage in further discussion with comments presented during this time, the board may not discuss or take action on any matter raised during this public comment section, except to decide whether to place the matter on the agenda for a future meeting. Although this may give the impression that we're not being responsive, these procedures are critical to ensure the compliance with the Open Meetings Act and to avoid compromising the speaker's goals or the board's mission. So with that, um, any public comment on item three? All right, this is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I have opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Uh, members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this agenda item, please click on that icon with a question mark within a square located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen. We're currently sharing instructions on the screen for your reference. And I'll pause a moment now to give um, the public time access to that Q&A panel and submit their request. All right, this is the moderator, and it looks like at this time there are no requests for public comment. Oh, my apologies, we have a request for public comment. <laughs> All right, give me one second. Um, we have a request from individual identified as um, Joe Linder Crow, PhD. All right, Joe, I'll be unmuting your microphone now. Yes, hi, I just don't see that option. I don't have a comment, but I don't see the option at the bottom of my screen. Is it supposed to um, show up when you open it up? I'm just wondering for later. For um, for later. To, to make a comment? Yes, you said to click in the square. I didn't yes. see the little square. Yes, there should, um, well, let me first ask, what kind of device are you using? I'm using a laptop computer. A laptop? Okay. Um, on the WebEx screen, there should be a um, button that has the Q&A feature um, to type a comment. Um, you did type a comment, so you were able yeah, to access I typed it. A, yeah. I typed a comment, but I didn't see the little question mark square. Is that okay? Yeah, that's, uh, um, that's fine. You were still able to access the Q&A panel. So. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're All welcome. Right. I'll go ahead and put you back on mute. Thanks so much, Madam Moderator. Seeing no further comments um, and for item three, we can go ahead and close this item and move to item four. Um, Ms. Sorg, I understand this may be just an informational item, but given that there's continues to be great interest in, um, in obviously an update with regard to um, what's happening, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and bring this item up. Ms. Sorg? Uh, good morning. Um, there are aren't uh, many new items uh, updated on the waiver update, but they are included in the meeting materials. 
Um, the most recent two um, updates to the waivers were the continuation of the extension on continuing education and meeting those requirements um, due to the pandemic, as well as the face-to-face uh, -face supervision, um, which was also extended. So that is the update on that. Thank you, Ms. Sorek. Board members, are there any questions for Ms. Sorek with regard to the update or any items in the, uh, the accompanying items with this agenda? Okay. Seeing none, um, could we open up public comment on this item, Madam Moderator? All right, this is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I have opened up the Q&A panel for public comment. Uh, members of the public, um, if you wish to make a public comment, please uh, locate that icon with a question mark within a square in the bottom right-hand corner of your WebEx screen. Um, currently sharing instructions on the screen for your reference. In the Ask field, typically in the lower right-hand corner, um, please type, I would like to make a public comment and send to all panelists. And I'll pause a moment to give the public time to access that Q&A panel and submit their requests. All right, this is a moderator. Looks like we do have one request for public comment. Uh, individual identified as Dan Evans. Dan, I will be unmuting your microphone now. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I'd like to make a brief statement to the board that includes a request for an item to be added to the agenda for a future meeting. Uh, by way of background, I'm a psychologist who recently relocated to San Diego from Washington State. Uh, where I'm licensed and I've been practicing for, for several years. One of the final steps for me to obtain psychology licensure in California is to pass the California Psychology Law and Ethics exam, which is currently administered only in person at, at PSI testing centers. Um, but I've had serious concerns about potentially exposing myself to COVID-19 by spending two and a half hours in a closed space with other test takers. Uh, even if they're physically distanced and wearing masks. Um, these measures reduce the risk of transmission, but there is still risk. Um, and I want to point out that my concern is not just for myself, but also for elderly family members I live with who are especially vulnerable to contracting and, and dying from this disease. Um, I contacted the Board of Psychology in July of this year to request accommodations in the form of an outdoor space or a private testing room uh, to minimize the risk to myself and my family. And I was told at that time that those accommodations uh, are only for individuals with physical or mental disabilities, uh, which does not apply in my case. Uh, my view is that is that requiring this in-person test, uh, even while COVID-19 cases are widespread and surging across the state of California, is surprising. Uh, considering that many states administer uh, psychology law and ethics exams online, um, and many have shifted to an online format due to the pandemic, um, including states such as Kentucky, where I did my graduate training. Um, it's also striking to me when confronted with a similar testing issue, the California Supreme Court recently chose a different course. So out of the concern for safety of test takers and their family members, the court directed the California State Bar to shift the bar exam to an online format. So it's difficult for me to understand why, in the face of this clear and growing public health threat, the Board of Psychology would still find it appropriate or even permissible to require that applicants subject themselves or their vulnerable family members to that kind of risk, while refusing to provide reasonable alternative accommodations for those who are themselves are at higher risk or who live with those who are at high risk. I think there are, there are several possible remedies for this situation. Uh, first, as I had originally proposed, the board could allow those who are more vulnerable or who live with those who are more vulnerable to have access to private testing rooms or outdoor testing space. Second, the board could grant temporary licensure to otherwise qualified candidates until the COVID-19 emergency has passed. And that's, a, that's an approach that other states such as Arizona are currently using. Third, the board could move the exam to an online format, as the California Bar has been instructed to do by the Supreme Court. Uh, the board may not have had occasion to use an online testing approach before, but other states have used it successfully. So, for example, the state of Washington's Board of Psychology 
uses an online format for its juris jurisprudence exam, which is comparable to California's law and ethics exam. So in closing, I, I want to ask that the board put this item on the agenda for the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Evans. Um, I, I think um, you are one agenda item off with regard to um, agenda item three, but we'll take your comments in consideration as it relates to number three and um, and adding this as a future conversation point. Um, does board staff, um, either Ms. Ms. Marks, um, any comments or board members have any comments on this item? Oh, and excuse me, I'm seeing no further public comment. I'm going to ask that Madam Moderator close the public comment section. Uh, Mr. President? Yes. Uh, this is Nori Marks. You can it, um, so, uh, perhaps have the, if, I'm going to see if we have a licensure committee update. It might be something that the licensure committee can talk about at a future item for one of their uh, agendas, or the board can uh, take a vote on whether or not it wants to add that to a future agenda, or you can um, direct the licensure committee to simply uh, discuss that at a future meeting when it has the opportunity to do so. Thank you, Ms. Mars. Dr. Harpsheets, as um, our esteemed chair of the licensure committee, do you have any remarks on this item? Um, I made a note and I will, um, talk with Ms. Marks or Mr. McGuire about um, addressing this issue. Also, I think it's going to be important to see what some of the other states' discussion has come up in ASPPB meetings. And their, I, I think it came up at their annual meeting also. So I will do some research on that and see what I can find out and see how other states are handling that um, also. So thank you, Dr. Evans. Thank you, Dr. Archives. Are there any additional comments from the board with regard to item four or any questions from Ms. Sorek? Dr. Archives? Oh, I'm sorry, I just didn't unmute myself. <laughs> no worries. It is the theme of 2020 for all of us. So thank you, Dr. Harpsheet. All right. I don't see any board comment uh, for the board comments. Um, thank you to Dr. Evans for his public comment on this item. Um, we will now move to item number five. So um, item five, um, for item 5A, uh, dates and locations of the 2021 Board and Committee meetings, that's in our, a packet, as you'll see for next year. Note that we're planning to continue meeting remotely um, on, through at least um, our, uh, the summer, just given where expectations are with regard to the pandemic. We will adjust, obviously, accordingly depending on any new executive orders, but that is our tentative plan for 2021. Um, any board comment or questions on 5A? All right, seeing none, um, I'm gonna do public comment for this entire section together. So I'm gonna go into item 5B, committee updates. Um, one of the things that we heard from the last board meeting was that there was an incredible interest in SIPAT. And so um, as the, um, and we, and so this item is here to reflect that input. Um, and as the telepsychology committee winds down their work on one item, um, they will, I've asked that Dr. Phillips is chair of the committee um, take on this uh, this issue and review the psychological interjurisdictional compact SIPACT, um, which is an interstate compact designed to facilitate the practice of telepsychology and the temporary in-person face-to-face practice of psychology across state boundaries. Um, and so Dr. Phillips, um, joined by Ms. Nystrom and Dr. Tate, um, will begin a thorough study of SIPACT, which will culminate in a policy recommendations to the board by the end of next year. Um, and as the, as since this is new item, they're not reflected in the dates and locations for committee meetings next year. Um, but this will be a committee that will be meeting and that will be um, shared with folks as that process lays out. Um, Dr. Phillips and 
Any comments on this item? No, sir, I think that covers it. Uh, we do want to be responsive um, to the concerns expressed by um, our licensees regarding our participation or lack of participation in SIPACT. Um, and, so, and to that end, uh, we will have a committee of three, so the meetings will be open meetings, if I understand correctly, um, which will allow for impact at the committee level as well, or for feedback at the committee level, as well as at a uh, board meeting where we take the recommendations under con consideration. We had previously rejected the idea of SIPAC, but we're more than happy to um, revisit the subject and give it additional thought. We understand that there have been some modifications to the system that may uh, address the concerns that we originally raised. Thank you so much, Dr. Phillips. Is there additional board discussion on this item? All right, seeing none for now. Um, Madam moderator, could you open the public comment section for item number five, please? Sure. Uh, this is the moderator, and at the direction of the board, I have opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this agenda item, please click on that icon with a question mark up in the square located at the bottom right-hand corner of your WebEx screen. I'll now pause a moment to give the public time access to uh, time to access that Q&A panel and submit their requests. Oh, and it looks like we do have a couple individuals who requested public comment. We'll start with our first individual, um, Joe Linder Crow. Joe will be unmuting your microphone now. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Joe Linder Crow. I'm the CEO at the California Psychological Association. Just want to ask a question about um, the committee on telepsychology. I'm really happy to hear that the board is going to be looking at this again, at the SIPAC again. Um, since this is a three-person committee, um, is it safe to assume that these committee meetings will be noticed um, so that um, the public can attend when you have committee meetings? Yes, as I mentioned and Dr. Phillips emphasized that this is a three-person committee and while it's not reflected in our 2021 schedule because the schedule was developed before this item, those committee meetings will be noticed and posted online. Great, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Right. Linda Crow. Um, next person, Madam Moderator. Yes, um, we'll be moving on to our next individual, identified as Natalie Feinblatt. Natalie, I will be unmuting your microphone now. Hi, yes, thank you for um, taking my question. Um, uh, pretty much the answer to, to Jill Linda Crow's uh, question answered mine, but just as a follow-up, I am also glad that you guys are revisiting this. And where will those um, committee meetings be noticed online? Where can those be found? Thank you so much for your uh, question, Dr. Feinblatt. The meeting notice can be found online at our board website. Um, and when you visit our board website, you're able to click to um, the About Us section, which will list out where the committee board meetings are located. Um, if you have difficulty navigating the website, um, which is psychology.ca.gov. Um, please reach out to us at bopmail at dca.ca.gov and we can help you through in terms of navigating the website at psychology.ca.gov. Okay, great, thank you. All right, um, looks like that was the last individual who has requested public comment on this agenda item. Would you like me to close the Q&A panel? Yes, thank you so much, Madam Moderator. Moderator, um, Board members, I'm sorry, Ms. Mark? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. President, I just wanted to add, too, with response to the last commenter, that uh, I believe that anyone who, is list, who gets um, included on the interested parties list for the board would also get an email notice about any meetings. And I believe the board's website will have a link to signing up for the interested parties list. Thank you, Ms. Marks. Um, board members, any questions, discussion on this item? All right, hearing none, 
Um, we will now take up item number six, discussion and possible approval of the board meeting minutes. Board members, any um, edits or questions about the board meeting minutes? Um, seeing no questions or um, comments, will someone make a motion to adopt the board meeting as amended with any technical items? This is Dr. Uh, second by Dr. Harbsheet. So it's been moved by Dr. Tate and seconded by Dr. Harbsheet. Um, Madam moderator, could you open the uh, public comment section on item number six, please? All right, uh, this is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I've opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this agenda item, please click on that icon with a question mark within a square located at the bottom right-hand corner of your WebEx screen. I'll now pause a moment to allow time to access that Q&A panel and submit their request. Seeing no public comment, Madam Moderator, could you go ahead and close the, the section? Sure, sure. Thanks. The Q&A feature is now closed. Um, any additional board comments or discussion on this item? All right. Seeing no unmuted um, lines or um, hands raised, uh, I'm going to ask that Ms. McCochran um, call the roll to on the motion made by Dr. Tate and seconded by Dr. Harpsheets to approve the meetings of uh, the meeting minutes of the July board meeting. Okay. Kasuga? Hi. Cervantes? Hi. Who? Hi. Harpsheets? Hi. Nystrom? Abstain? Phillips? Aye. Riscate? Aye. Rogers? Aye. Tate? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Thank you so much, Ms. McCochran. We will now take up item number seven, where I'll turn this over to you, Dr. Tate. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to give a little background so the new board members and the members of the public understand what the action item is. Uh, the pandemic and the racial inequality that have been extensive in 2020 have highlighted the Board of Psychology needs to address how the events have impacted the board and how the board conducts its business. Um, President Fu, Ms. Sorek, and I met to discuss these concerns. And we came up with some areas of focus that are listed in the agenda. At the last Outreach and Communications Committee meeting, which was on September 25th, 2020, the committee, with feedback from attendees at the meeting, wanted to develop a survey to assess what issues around deliver delivery of psychological services and telehealth. So for today, the actionable item on the agenda is that the Outreach and Communications Committee is recommending that the board delegate to the committee the development of a survey to stakeholders to assess what issues are surrounding the digital divide that impact delivery of psychological services via telehealth. And if there are any questions, hopefully Ms. Sorek, Dr. Rogers, or I can answer. Thank you, Dr. Tate. Any questions for Dr. Tate on this item? I will move that we adopt the recommendation of the Outreach and Education Committee. Second. All right. I think it's been moved by Dr. Phillips, and I believe the second was by Dr. Kasubian. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> Love it. Okay. That's wonderful. Um, so I'm going to ask that, Madam Moderator, could you please open the public comment section for um, this item that Dr. Tate just presented. All right, this is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I've opened up that Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a public comment on this agenda item, please click on that icon with a question mark within a square located at the bottom right-hand corner of your WebEx screen. 
go ahead and pause a moment to allow time to access that Q&A panel and submit their requests. I don't see any uh, public comment, but I do notice that Mr. McGuire, your line is unmuted. Do you have any comments, um, Mr. McGuire, who's our um, counsel? Oh, oh hi. Um, I think I accidentally unmuted my line, the opposite of the theme of 2020, but uh, I took <laughs> this opportunity to say hello to everybody and, and looking forward to working with you in the future. But uh, mostly you'll be hearing from Noreen today and uh, a future meeting, and mostly you'll be hearing from me. Thank you so much, Mr. McGuire. Welcome. Um, I don't Mr. President, um, I'd like to just like um, have a comment. Yes, please. And um, Madam Moderator, could you go ahead and close the public comment section as there's no um, public comment that we saw. And, and Dr. Kusa, excuse me, Dr. Kusuda, please. Let me just lower my hand before I forget. <laughs> okay, so um, I just wanted to uh, have a comment on the digital divide uh, survey, and I think it's a wonderful idea. Um, having practiced um, via telehealth the last nine months, um, I've seen a lot of disparities that I'm concerned about. I just wanted to make sure that um, as part of the survey, we make sure to um, uh, listen to or account for uh, populations that um, need an interpreter or don't speak, um, uh, you know, English or require kind of like some form of like translation. I wanted to make sure that we are accounting for individuals that have developmental disabilities that may require um, kind of like assistance by someone else to set up the the telehealth um, access to uh, services. Um, and uh, those that have like um, technological limitations, like um, individuals that um, that have that are unable to um, utilize technologies that are being commonly used right now. Also, um, I wanted to make sure that we are accounting for the elderly because most of them um, uh, have you know, difficulties with accessing technology as well. So I just want to make sure that those three key um, groups are uh, going to be highlighted in the survey or um, that we're going to inquire about um, those, those populations. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Kasuga. Um, we, the survey hasn't been established or created yet. Um, we're waiting for this approval from the board, but um, obviously we'd like to include all of our special needs and special populations in the survey regarding online platforms and telehealth. So thank you. Ms. Marks? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to uh, say I, I, I may have missed Heard Dr. Phillips, I thought I heard him refer in his motion to the committee by its old name, Outreach and Education. I just wanted to make sure that the motion accurately reflected his motion to approve the report from the Outreach and Communications Committee. Thank you, Ms. Marks. So um, the motion is by Dr. Phillips to, um, to adopt the Outreach and Communications Committee's recommendation um, for the board to delegate to this committee the development of a survey to stakeholders to assess what the issues are surrounding the digital divide that impact delivery of psychological services via telehealth. And, and, and for clarification, this is agenda 7I, so I as in um, India. Um, Dr. Tate, Dr. Rogers, um, ad additional comments on, um, on your end as our esteemed uh, committee members? No questions for me, Mr. President. No comments on my end. Thank you. All right. Seeing no further discussion from board members or from um, staff, um, Ms. McCochran, could you please call the roll? 
sure. Kasuga? Aye. Cervante? Aye. Who? Aye. Harbsheet? Aye. Nystrom? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Rescate? Aye. Rogers? Aye. Tate? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Thank you so much, Ms. Cochran. Um, so as I noted at the beginning of the meeting, we're taking up action items only. Um, so at this time, and so um, we'll return to Ms. Tate, um, time permitting after all of our, our um, other items in closed session on the other items um, in this section. Um, item number eight, review and consideration of the um, board's administrative procedures manual. I'm going to turn this over to Ms. Oric. Hi, yes, actually we have uh, Mr. Gage on the line um, and I think he is prepared to uh, present on this item. Um, he prepared the memo and worked with uh, Ms. Marks on um, amendments to the Administrative Procedures Manual and those are um, indicated in highlights. Um, and I will pass it over to Mr. Gage uh, to add any other um, additional information on this item. And then there is a motion requested of the board um, to review the minute, or review the amendments and um, approve uh, the document uh, once those are considered. Excellent. I think we're in the process of um, getting Mr. Gage back. Oh, he's on. Perfect. All right. Mr. Gage? Mr. Gage, you're muted if you are um, sharing with us thoughts. Uh, this is the moderator. Um, Mr. Gage, if you're unable to unmute your microphone, the um, microphone button should be at the bottom of your WebEx screen. And when it's green, that means you're unmuted and you're able to speak. And when it's red, that means you're muted. Right now, you're currently muted. I'm going to go ahead and jump in. Um, Mr. Gage is uh, taking on the uh, the the task of contact tracing, um, all programs were asked to uh, provide volunteers, um, and he ha uh, was uh, happily willing to take on that role, and I believe he is actually on a call right now um, and listening into the board meeting um, uh, on the site when he has a, a free moment. So I will go ahead and take any questions on the draft document that you may have. Um, and we also have Ms. Marks on the line if there are, are questions about any of uh, her uh, recommended changes. This is Dr. Hartsky. Um, I, I would like to suggest that in the uh, strategic goal areas, we have goals um, one to six, and that we amend the name, say, of goal one from licensing to licensure and goal five from outreach and education to outreach and communications to be consistent with the name of our committees that address those issues. Um, and additionally, early on where the board members are listed, I'm sure this will happen, but that that uh, list be updated. And I can respond on that uh, item. Uh, we. We have two separate uh, things going on. Um, we have the titles of our committees, uh, which the board reviewed and approved as part of the sunset review process. Um, and then we have the strategic plan, which uh, has general categories that the board adopted as part of that plan. Um, that's why the two, uh, the terminology and the documents is different. Um, it's just 
consistent with the strategic plan to talk about general licensing, outreach, and education. Um, so that's why that's different. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thank you, Dr. Harpsheets and Ms. Sorek. Um, if I don't see any board members with their mics off or hands raised, um, and so what I would ask if, if there's a motion to adopt the um, draft of the Administrative Procedure Manual with the amendments as articulated in our documents and the comments of Dr. Harpsheets' feedback. So moved. I'll second that. This is uh, Ms. Cervantes. It's been moved by Dr. King and seconded by Ms. Cervantes. Um, are there additional board comments on this? And while we ruminate, I'm going to ask Madam Moderator to open up the public comment section, and then I'll turn it back to Mr. Uh, to Dr. Tate, who has her mic uh, unmuted. I just wanted to say thank you for all the hard work. We've been working on this for a long time. It's been at several meetings, so I'm happy it's going forward. Thank you, Dr. Tate. And I actually would call, Ms. Ork, if you can help me um, refresh my memory. I believe we also had Dr. Rogers in February volunteer to um, take the role of being disciplined grammarian and making sure this was, was up to um, standards. Is that correct, or is that another item that Dr. Rogers worked on? That is absolutely correct. Um, we had uh, three individuals uh, working on this document to make it uh, what it looks like today. We had Ms. Marks, uh, Mr. Gage, and Dr. Rogers uh, filled in as the grammarian. Um, so that was extremely helpful um, team effort and uh, appreciate all, all that went into this. Thank you, Ms. Sorek. Dr. Rogers? It was, a delight. it was a delight to help. Thank you so much. Um, I don't see any um, questions, excuse me, um, any public comment identified, but I'll make one last call since I, we, there was some board um, conversation. Um, Madam Moderator has opened the public comment section, and if you follow the instructions on the screen to go ahead and um, do that, you can type in that. All right, um, not seeing um, public comment, we'll go ahead and close that section out and bring it back to the board. Mr. Cervantes, do you have any comments, additional comments? Um, yeah, I just, um, we this topic um, or this uh, item has uh, come up before, and I don't just want to thank everybody who worked on it. Um, I, I just, like, um, how do I say, my, my brain feels mushy. <laughs> But I just really appreciate the thoroughness as I reviewed um, and was considering the ideas and the different changes that, that were highlighted, the comments from Ms. Marks. Um, it was all very clear, very explicit, and I appreciate that thoughtfulness uh, for from all of you who worked on this. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vante. All right. Okay. Not seeing any further board comment or discussion, I'm going to ask that Ms. McCochran call the roll um, with this motion to approve the draft of the Administrative Procedure Manual with the amendments outlaid um, in the document and with Dr. Hartree's comments. Okay. Kasuga? Aye. Cervantes? Aye. Who? Aye. Harb Sheets? Aye. Nystrom? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Rescate? Aye. Rogers? Aye. Tate? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you so much. And I'm sure that Mr. Gage and the rest of the board staff are really pleased because this has been on our agenda for several meetings now, so I'm glad we have this adopted. 
Um, we are gonna, so item nine is our alleged and regulatory affairs, but we don't actually have any items for um, action this turnaround. Um, but Mr. glass Beagle has done an excellent job um, with his team on providing um, an update and summary. So we'll return to this item if there are um, um, additional um, comments um, for discussion. Uh, the one thing I will say and take up is just the legislative items for future meeting. Um, and this is item 9B as in boy. Um, the board may discuss other items of legislation in sufficient detail to determine whether such items should be on a future board meeting agenda. Um, board members, are there any legislative items for a future meeting that you would like to um, include for either a board agenda or a committee agenda? Dr. Um, excuse me, Ms. Cervantes, but soon to be Dr. Cervantes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just want to bring up uh, the the concept that we discussed in February about um, if there is legislation in the next cycle on um, gathering um, more uh, demographic data uh, in the licensing process. Um, if that theme can be considered by the committee when they meet and review the legislation that comes up next year. I would appreciate that. Thank you, Ms. Cervantes. Um, we will add that on to our um, committee agenda, or we'll ask staff to make sure that it's revisited in uh, the committee agenda for that. Thank you. Um, Madam moderator, could you please open the public comment section for item 9B, please. All right, this is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I have opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a public comment on agenda item 9B, um, please click on that icon of a question mark within a square located at the bottom right-hand corner of your WebEx screen. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow time to access that Q&A panel and submit any requests. All right, not seeing any public comment on item 9B, we will close the comment sec the public comment section. Um, any further discussion from the board to add items to the committee agenda or to the board agenda? All right, seeing none, um, we will go ahead and move on. Thank you, Mr. Fontes, for your um, addition. Um, we are gonna take up item number 10, the enforcement unit report. Um, it's, I think, really important, and we've heard feedback in the past that even if there isn't an action item for the enforcement committee, the enforcement unit report, excuse me, that we do hear that. And so I'm going to ask that Ms. Montorubio um, please provide um, a, um, a report for us on item number 10. Ms. Montorubio. Thank you. Um, so attached to the enforcement report is the overview of enforcement activity, um, which displays complaint investigation and discipline statistics for the previous five fiscal years and the current fiscal year to date. Um, since July 1st of 2020, the board has received 358 complaints, and all complaints are received and opened and assigned to an enforcement analyst. The board reviews complaints in the order received, Every complaint that is received is opened within 10 days and a letter is sent to the complainant acknowledging receipt of the complaint. The matter is then assigned to an analyst who performs a deeper review of the complaint to establish the basis of the allegations. And if additional complaints are received against any one licensee, the complaint is assigned to a separate analyst to decrease any chance of bias against the licensee. At our July board meeting, I was asked if, we, if it would be possible to sort out the multiple complaints against the same licensee. The enforcement unit compiled data for the last three years to see how many licensees had multiple complaints filed against them. The board currently licenses 22,017 psychologists, 1,348 psychological assistants, and 111 registered psychologists. 
Since July 1st of 2018, there have been 226 licensed psychologists, 22 psychological assistants, and one registered psychologist with multiple complaints. There were 651 multiple complaints filed, which includes complaints against both licensees and unlicensed individuals. The total may also include multiple complaints filed against the subject for the same incident. For example, if there is an incident posted on social media, the board may receive multiple complaints regarding that incident. The fact that the board may receive multiple complaints against a single licensee does not on its own result in discipline because each separate complaint must be reviewed on its own merits. The receipt of multiple complaints does not automatically result in a prioritization of those complaints over others currently under review. Since July 1st of 2020, the board has issued seven enforcement citations. Citation and fines are issued for minor violations since July 1st of 2020, the board has referred 21 cases to the Office of the Attorney General for formal discipline. And currently, the board is monitoring 43 probationers. And of those 43, one is out of compliance. Being out of compliance can result in a citation and fine or further disciplinary action against, I'm sorry, through the Office of the Attorney General. Are there any questions? Thank you, Ms. Um, Dr. Phil? Of course, excuse me. I don't have my hand raised to my knowledge. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, are there any questions from board members? I know Dr. Harbsheets, you had raised the um, question about multiple um, complaints against one licensee. And, and so I want to make sure we get to you as well. Thank you, Ms. Monterevio, for that information that answered the question that I had. You're welcome. Right. Um, Ms. Cervantes? I just have a, a question. Um, it, Ms. Monterevio, with, um, in terms of the complaints that or the complaints that are coming in that uh, your team has filed um, in in this fiscal year um, do you notice a, a trend um, an increasing trend or a decreasing trend given the circumstances with covid and how uh, folks may be practicing uh, psychology or is and or um, are the um, claim um, complaints coming in from things that might have happened before um, the pandemic? Um, I'm not seeing an increase or decrease um, in, in the trend. Uh, if you look at the overview of enforcement, uh, since fiscal year 16, 17, we receive over a thousand uh, complaints a year, I, I think we're on track to see about the same this year as well. Um, to my knowledge, we're not seeing a, an increase um, or even any real kind of complaint related complaints due to, to COVID. Um, but again, I, I just think we're on track to be over a thousand complaints again for fiscal year 2021. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't see additional board mics unmuted or, um, excuse me, Dr. Kusuga, your hand is raised. My apologies, Dr. Kusuga. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fu. Um, uh, Ms. Monterubio, I understand that multiple complaints, you said that multiple complaints doesn't always result in prioritization, but are there factors that are considered for prioritization, if any? Um, yes, I think at a previous board meeting, I, I shared that the board follows uh, the Department of Consumer Affairs Complaint Prioritization and Referral Guidelines, and there's four categories um, that, that we do look at. Um, obviously, acts of, of any type of um, serious patient or consumer harm that would, would be a high priority for the board, um, anything involving sexual misconduct with a patient, 
um, repeated allegations of maybe drug abuse or practicing while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Um, obviously, if we see a pattern of those type of complaints and um, being submitted, we definitely would want to take a, a very close look at those and determine how we need to investigate those. Um, do they need to be expedited possibly to the Division of Investigation um, so our investigative team can and investigate those quickly. Um, you know, category two, which is considered high, um, that usually includes unlicensed practice, unlicensed activity of any sort, aiding and abetting, um, criminal violations as well. Um, so yes, we do look at these four categories um, and that is how we do prioritize um, the complaints that come in. Does, does that answer your question, Dr. Kasuga? Yes, thank you so much for um, reminding us of the four category, uh, four categories for prioritization. And um, I was just like curious about um, whether there are things that um, complainants could do or people that are submitting complaints do to uh, nudge their complaints a little bit, but. I, I'm sure that that all complaints are being handled appropriately and on a timely manner. Thank you. You're you're welcome. I'm, I'm going to ask that Madam Moderator go ahead and open the public comment section for item 10 with regard to the enforcement unit report. All right, this is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I have opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a public comment on this agenda item, please click on the icon of a question mark within a square located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen. And it looks like we do have an individual who has requested public comment. Uh, individual identified as Kathleen Russell. Give me one second while I find her in the attendee list. All right, Kathleen, I will be unmuting your microphone now. Thank you so much for the opportunity to address the board. Um, my name is Kathleen Russell. I'm the executive director of the Center for Judicial Excellence. Appreciate the report back from Sandra regarding the multiple complaints issue. As this board is well aware, and I'll repeat just for the new board members who are with us, um, there have been concerns from the general public coming to our organization which is on the front lines of the family court crisis involving this board's licensees who are custody evaluators, who are PhD psychologists. Um, I have a question for Ms. Monterubio um, regarding the 651 multiple complaints that she cited, stating those are complaints related to both licensed and unlicensed um, psychologists, my question would be um, whether, um, how many of these include child custody complaints? Um, and do these include complaints that were filed or just complaints that were investigated? Um, I know some of this relates to concerns and questions I have about your agenda item for tomorrow, um, number 23A1, but um, I would like to know if it's possible to break that out for the public, and maybe at the next board meeting. Um, well, actually, I can probably answer that right now. So the 651 complaints are complaints that were filed, um, all complaints are investigated, whether that's a desk investigation or a formal investigation. Of the 651 complaints, um, 18 of those, um, 18, there were 18 licensees with child custody complaints. Okay, with multiple complaints. Correct. Okay. All right, very good. Um, and I think I'll have follow-up questions for you regarding um, this child custody stakeholder um, follow-up tomorrow. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Russell, Ms. Campbell. Um, excuse me, Madam Moderator, could you please unmute Ms. Campbell's um, line? She has a public comment. All right, this is the moderator. Um, give me 
One second. All right. Um, Catherine, I'll be unmuting your microphone now. California Protective Parents Association. And I appreciate that even during this pandemic, we are allowed to meet online and get public comment. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you for the report. Um, and I will echo the, um, the statements made by um, Kathleen Russell that there are people who reach out to us as well um, with concerns about um, complaints of your licensees and with the family court situation. Um, because instead of criminally um, charging anyone, if it's in a family, just like women, when women used to complain of being hit and brutalized by their husband, it used to be close the door to family matter. Um, that's happening with children right now. And what's happening is that's a family matter. So if someone's being sexually abused or hit, um, they are being sent to family court. So I want people to understand um, the importance of this because they're not going to criminal court, they're going to family court. And in family court, they sign one of your licensees and those licensees um, usually give a recommendation and they're rubber stamped by the court because the courts have a such limited time and they've decided to, to trust the licensees. And, um, and, we, and we have heard many complaints many, many complaints um, because abuse is being dismissed. And that's um, very important. So um, I have multiple questions, um, but the first one is, is um, Ms. Monterubio, you mentioned that the four criteria, um, and it says if a psychologist is, is um, sexually assaulting a patient, but what if someone they're evaluating is sexually assaulting? part someone in the evaluation. Um, does that get raised? Uh, well, sexual misconduct is a, is a high priority for the board. Um, are you asking if we received a complaint of an evaluator who sexually assaulted um, someone he or she is evaluating what the board would do with that type of complaint? Um, I'm asking when an evaluator enters a family court matter and someone in the family court matter is accused of sexually abusing their children or hitting their children. Um, if they're sexually abusing their children, is that raised to a higher priority? If, a, if, if, if the patient, the two patients of the evaluator, one is abusing the other, the evaluator is not sexually abusing anyone, but is making a choice whether how to handle that situation. That's what I'm asking. Okay, I, I don't know if that would be raised to uh, an urgent matter. Um, what I can let you and the board know is that every complaint that comes in is, is thoroughly reviewed. And I've mentioned at previous board meetings and actually handed out um, the procedures on how child custody complaints are handled. Um, they are investigated. We collect evidence. We have a licensed psychologist who is a board expert review that complaint and determine whether or not a departure has occurred. Um, if so, we then look to formally discipline an individual. Right. And um, I, I've sat through many different county meetings and everyone has a procedure, but when the procedure is not working, um, I'm looking for solutions to help it go better. So my request to the board is that if, if a complaint involves an evaluator working with a family that includes sexual abuse allegations and harm to that child, other types of abuse, I am requesting that that is now added to the priority list that it's moved up because you still have a person who's being sexually abused, whether it's by um, a parent that the evaluator is working with or by the evaluator itself. So I think that needs to be included. So that is my request to the board. The other, um, I'm gonna just go back for a minute because I never heard us go through 9A and I have a public comment for 9A and I, is, did you skip over 9A and not ask for public comment on that? 
Ms. Campbell, um, one of the things I said from the outset and repeated was that we would be taking items up with agenda item, excuse me, with information, apologies, with action items first um, and taking those items up and that with the exception of a few cases like the enforcement report, we would go ahead and take up that, um, take up those items and that when we reached upon each item, regardless of if it was action or informational, we would state if we were going to hold it until a later time when we could return to it, um, or if we would take it on immediately, like we did here with item number 10. So if time permitting in terms of the number of, of items we have on our agenda and the length of public comments, um, we will return to item 9A um, because it's currently informational. You're always welcome to submit comments to BOPmail at dca.ca.gov um, if there is an item that you would like to um, submit as well, uh, uh, a public comment on items as well. Um, I understand you had further questions with regard to item number 10. I would ask that you ask all the questions you would like to ask, and then we can let Ms. Monterubio um, answer them um, and then return to board discussion on item 10. My other question is on the multiple, um, you mentioned something about social media, and it wasn't clear when you said people have multiple. I think you said there were 18, multi 18 people with multiple complaints, if I heard you correctly, Ms. Monterubio. And it wasn't clear is if those are on different cases. Are the complaints all about the same matter, or are the complaints against multiple families? In other words, are there problems that they are hurting multiple families, or is there are there multiple complaints of what the harm is happening with one family? That's one question. The other question is, what is being done to look at right now? Only two percent from when you go from investigation cited um, from those. Um, complaints being made to being cited, that's only 2%. And that that's a lot of people who are weeded out of that process. And um, we have seen valid complaints be dismissed. So I'm wondering what procedures are you doing to ensure that valid complaints are being looked at and, and people um, who have these licenses are not going on to harm other families. And also, I'm not sure why um, what's not in this report for item number 10 is the amount of time it takes. And I'm wondering, um, you have the, I forget, it's 500 and something days because you, it includes the um, AG's office. But I'm wondering if you could break that out, how many days before you send it to the AG's office and then in the AG's office? And also, these are the averages, and we know some stay in there um, for years. And you know, you're, I think you said the average day is 90 days um, that you move these through. And I think, like, I forget the percentage of, I mean, a huge percentage of them get weeded through, and most likely it's because they're being closed. So I'm just wondering what steps are being made to ensure that your people who are going through these are actually making sure they're not invalidating abuse of what's happening by one of your licensees. Um, and I'm saying the, these things because I'm very concerned of the numbers. We're concerned that when we see valid complaints be dismissed, and we're concerned when we know that there are probably more valid complaints than 2%. Thank you so much, Ms. Campbell, for your public comment and service to our state. Um, Ms. Montrubil, before you answer, do you have, did you get all three questions that Ms. Campbell asked? Do you have any clarifying questions from Ms. Campbell? Um, no, I believe I, I got all three of her questions. Um, she can she can chime back in if, if I didn't. Um, I was just a little bit confused about the 90 days. I, I don't remember talking about 90 days. Um, but I, I can try my best to answer her, her concerns. Um, I, I definitely want to talk about um, the Ms. September. Yes. I, I see Ms. Mark's line is off, so I'm going to put your answer on the responses on hold, and I just want to make sure that Ms. Marks has an opportunity to jump in real quickly. Sure. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to make sure that right now we keep the um, 
response with respect to public comments to the particular agenda item of the enforcement report and uh, some of the timelines and those issues are included in the report. I believe the substance of any particular kind of complaint may be more suited for discussion tomorrow where I believe that uh, the um, implementation of the uh, custody the stakeholder meetings will be discussed in more detail. Understood. Thank you, Ms. Marks, for um, clarifying that. So I don't see any further public comment um, in the box. So I'm going to ask that Madam Moderator go ahead and close the public comment section. And Ms. Montrubio, I'm going to ask that you answer the questions based on Ms. Marks' guidance. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned in, in the report, we have 651 multiple complaints filed since uh, July of 2018. Um, there were 18 licensees with child custody complaints. Um, I, I don't have more information, um, unfortunately, about those 18 licensees and the actual complaints that came in against them. Um, so I really can't give much more information than, than that. Um, what I can, again, talk about is that uh, the individuals that review these complaints are board staff. Um, they look to gather information when a complaint is submitted. Uh, we send letters out to subjects asking for uh, records and um, additional information. And then for child custody, we send to a board expert. That is our process because the majority of the complaints that come in allege bias. And as we understand we are lay people, <clears throat> we do rely heavily on our experts to determine whether or not there is a departure from the standard of care. If our expert opines that there was not a violation, that case is closed. We do not um, shop for experts. We don't send to multiple experts. We send to the one expert who is assigned. We ask for him or her to review all of the documentation that is submitted and to determine whether or not there's been a departure. If there is a departure, we can also do a formal investigation and gather additional evidence, interview additional witnesses, and then we would send down to the send the case down to the Office of the Attorney General for formal discipline. Um, all complaints are important to the board. Every single complaint is investigated. And again, we have an expert reviewer program, and these experts are in good standing. They are in the same field as the subject. So we have a child custody expert review child custody complaints. And we have to rely on the findings of our experts to determine whether or not there are violations. Um, and, and again, if there are, the board will send to the Attorney General's office for formal discipline, which could be revocation, could be probation with certain terms and conditions, could be suspension, restriction of a, a certain patient uh, population. So I just want to make clear that every complaint is investigated. Not every complaint is formally investigated, but there is at least a desk investigation that occurs. But for child custody, if bias is alleged, and I know that I've mentioned this before, those do go to an expert. Um, our performance measures are available on DCA's uh, website, so um, anyone from the public can take a look at uh, our timeframes. Um, I know Ms. Campbell mentioned the amount of time it takes, including the AG's office. Um, that is, I believe, 546 days, 564 days. Um, that is performance measure number four. That has always been a difficult measure for the board to um, to meet, um, and it is difficult when we are relying on outside entities um, to meet that performance goal. Um, all I can do as the manager of enforcement is make sure that the enforcement staff is investigating every complaint, um, are moving those cases as, as quickly as we can to get them to our investigative team, to get them to our board experts. Um, but once they leave our office and we're waiting um, for the Attorney General's office, um, to file an accusation. We don't really have control over that, but performance measure four 
has been a difficult uh, performance measure for the board to meet. And I, I know that I've mentioned that at previous meetings as well. Um, but again, I can include for our February meeting um, our performance measures if the board would like me to do that. I'll be happy to provide that information in February. Um, I, I don't, I think I've answered all of Ms. Campbell's questions. Thank you so much, Rubio. I appreciate you um, answering those questions. And I think um, I would be definitely interested in seeing those performance measures come back to us in a February enforcement report. Um, I'm going to ask if there are additional comments from board members on um, or questions of Monterubio on this item. All right. Um, I'm not seeing any, and I'm speaking slowly just in case folks are trying to reach for their mics. All right. Um, so I'm not seeing any further um, comments from board members or discussion discussion items on, on this, specifically to the enforcement unit report. I appreciate Ms. Mark's guidance about um, keeping things on agenda and look forward to our discussion on item 23 tomorrow um, with regard to the enforcement committee report. Um, so seeing no further board discussion, I'm going to move on um, and lay out basically what our plan is for the rest of the mid morning through our one to our time for hearing. So, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, um, we do have um, several closed matter cases before us. So what I'm going to do is that we're going to go ahead and um, go into closed session. Um, and um, we'll remain in closed session until 1.30 p.m. today for our regulatory hearing for item number 13. Um, so this means that items 11 and 12 will be held um, because those are actually, uh, excuse me, those are informational items only, and we will return to them time permitting, um, but we are not going to cover 11 and 12 um, verbally in, in our board meeting currently. Um, and that we're going to be going into closed session until 1.30 for the purposes of um, pursuing me to government code section 11.126.C3 to discuss disciplinary matters, including proposed decisions, stipulations, petitions for reinstatement or modification of penalties, petitions for reconsideration and remand. So we're going into closed session until 1.30 and we'll return at that time. Board members and staff who are, who are involved with closed session Ms. Monterubio has provided us a call-in number um, to um, call in, and I believe um, we have board staff who are going to resend that number out so it's available to you. Um, I would say that we can log off the WebEx um, so that we're not having our wires crossed here, um, and we can go ahead then into closed session to discuss um, these disciplinary cases uh, and petitions, uh, et cetera, listed here. Thank you, um, Madam Moderator. Um, and we will return at 1.30. Right. Any questions from board members or staff? All right. With that, uh, Ms. Rescate, did I Excuse hear uh, uh, Mr. Fu, um, where will we get that number to call in? Uh, Ms. Monterubio oh. sent it to us, but we're uh, staff is yeah. sending it out to everybody right now. I just got it. Okay, thank you. You bet. All right. See everyone there. and then. We'll go into closed session until 1.30. All right, this is the moderator. Um, just as a reminder to members of the public who are currently still on the line, um, or, uh, the board will be going into closed session. We'll be returning back into the WebEx call at 1.30. We'll, we'll keep the WebEx event open in the meantime. Um, but at 1.30, we'll be returning and going back into open session. So thank you. <laughs> 